Welcome to the Design and Manufacturing Laboratory. In this video, we will cover important protocols for your personal safety anytime you're working in this facility. As I go through the video with you today, I want you to take out your safety sheets and something to write with so that you can make comments on the important items that I highlight. With that said, you are responsible for all the content in this handout, so make sure you take the time to read all the details because they explain the reasons for each of the rules that I will discuss with you today. The first page contains a copy of the lab schedule for the semester, and as noted on this page, during each of your formal lab periods, you will have exclusive use of the laboratory, as well as the full attention of myself and the course TAs. The bottom of the page details the use of the course TA office hours and truly how valuable they are for your success in the course. So from this first week onward, we strongly encourage you to take advantage of them. Moving on to the next page, we find the discussion of the attendance roster. As noted, starting the second week of the semester, every student must sign in the attendance roster at the beginning of each formal lab period. Now we'll show an example of how to do so. Begin by finding your appropriate lab period. For example, Tuesday 5-6, Tuesday 7-8, etc. Next, find the appropriate week number across the top row of the page and notice that the corresponding date will be in parentheses following each week number. At this point, locate your name among the list of students as well as the current week number and date and sign in the intersecting cell. Please make it a habit of signing in promptly at the beginning of each lab period before getting busy and forgetting to do so. If you don't sign in or you sign in in the wrong location, you will not receive credit for that week's laboratory session. Page 3 begins a discussion on general shop safety. As you can read, your personal safety is always our number one concern when you're working in our facility. Consequently, you must always have a printed copy of your equipment safety sheets on your person anytime you're in our facility. As noted in the middle of the page, consult these safety rules frequently until they are committed to memory, and ignorance is never an excuse for improper or unsafe behavior in our laboratory. Finally, when you encounter a situation you are unsure of with regard to safety, we always want you to stop and ask a question before proceeding and doing something that could cause injury or equipment damage. Moving to page four, the first rule under general safety is to familiarize yourself with the layout of the laboratory. We will do this together during the orientation lab that takes place the first week of the semester. Rule number two under general shop safety reads, get checked out by a lab instructor the first time you use each machine or each process in the lab. Regardless of whether you've used a piece of equipment elsewhere or whether this is your first time learning to use it, we want to teach you the methods and protocols we use in our laboratory to ensure everyone uses the equipment the same way and to mitigate the chance of accidents occurring. Rule number three is to wear all necessary protective gear and clothing anytime you're in the laboratory. This includes proper eye protection to guard your eyes from airborne hazards, proper footwear to protect your feet from falling tools and materials, and proper pants made of substantial fabric to protect your lower body from sharp objects with which you may come into contact in the laboratory. Hearing protection and gloves are also available for your use in the lab. However, it is very important that you never wear gloves around moving machinery or power tools. Rule number four is to remove all personal accessories and loose clothing that might get caught on moving machinery. This includes any jewelry on your hands and wrists, any clothing that hangs loosely from your body, such as a tie or an open jacket, or headphones that could get caught or prevent you from hearing directions from an instructor in the lab. Rule number five is that hair longer than shoulder length must be securely tied up to prevent it from accidentally coming into contact with any rotating machinery in the lab. Rule number six, never work alone or without an instructor present. By the nature of an accident, you can never predict when it will occur. Therefore, you must always have somebody with you who can assist in the event of an accident. There will, of course, always be TAs on duty to assist you during your formal laboratory periods. However, this rule is important enough for your personal safety when working in other facilities 
that is included among the general shop safety rules presented in this course. Rule number seven, never work when impaired. This includes times when you are excessively tired or stressed or cannot focus on the rules necessary to have a safe work session in the laboratory. If you find yourself in this condition prior to a formal lab session, simply talk with me and we will schedule a makeup lab session. That said, however, as stated at the end of this section, it is very important that each of you learn to avoid last minute shop work due to procrastination and poor project and time planning in favor of consistent weekly effort as deadline driven haste can lead to ruined parts and serious injuries. General shop safety rule number eight, never leave a chuck key in a chuck. I want everyone to put two asterisks next to this important rule. Lathe chuck key safety is the most important rule for your personal safety in any manufacturing environment because breaking this rule can cause a five pound chuck key to strike your body with enough force to put you in the hospital or even cause a fatality. It's so important, we're covering it in this initial safety video and it will be the first item we train on next week when we teach you how to safely operate an engine lathe. I'm going to demonstrate on this lathe the risk that exists. The chuck key is used to open and close the chuck on the machine, which is what holds or clamps our workpiece. If you're loading a workpiece and you're using the chuck key and you get distracted for any reason, to talk to a TA, to look at your drawing, to talk to a teammate, for any reason, it is surprisingly easy to forget that you left the chuck key in the chuck and proceed to continue work and turn the machine on, which would cause the chuck key to be flown out of the chuck towards your body and cause, as I said, an extreme injury to your person or to somebody nearby. For that reason, we have one very simple rule when it comes to using the lathe chuck key in the lab, and that is anytime you use it, your hand must remain on it. So at no time will you ever have the chuck key in the chuck and take your hand off to do anything, ever. And that is, again, the most important rule for your personal safety and the one that you cannot break anytime you're working in a manufacturing facility because of how quickly it can lead to a severe accident. Number nine, never leave a machine running unattended for even the shortest amount of time. Due to the nature of the course and the experience level of the typical student taking it, we can never be confident that each setup is going to work on the first try. Consequently, you must always remain at the machine in case you need to stop it due to an unexpected problem. General safety rule number 10. Support workpieces and cutting tools as securely as possible. As noted in this section, a vibrating setup is an indication that your setup is not robust enough to resist the applied cutting forces. In this case, you must stop work immediately and improve the setup or the consequence will be broken tools or severe personal injury. Under no circumstance should you ever find yourself trying to hold a workpiece by hand while trying to machine it with a power tool such as a drill press, lathe, or milling machine. General shop safety rule number 11. Keep your hands well away from the point of contact between the workpiece and the cutting tool. Anytime we're using a powered machine tool, it's very important we identify the cutting zone, which is the region of contact between the cutting tool and the workpiece being machined. And we envision about a six inch radius sphere around that contact area. And inside that sphere, we would never bring our hands or a measuring instrument or even a rag to clean off the part while the machine is running. I'm going to demonstrate on this milling machine by turning it on. It's very easy to see what moves now. So imagining that six inch sphere, we would never bring anything again in that region while the machine is running. The large risk is that when rotating, 
every one of these tools is going to appear smaller in size than it actually is. So they are dangerously deceptive as to their actual size when moving. If you're trying to make a measurement, therefore, make sure that everything comes to a complete stop and then you can reach in and wipe off the part and make your measurement and continue with your work, but never try and save a few seconds by making a measurement or even cleaning off the part while leaving the machine running. The last risk is concerned, uh, <clears throat> sorry, has to do with the chips that are generated, uh, which are extremely sharp and serrated, and they can cause a very serious hand injury if we try and use our hands to move the chips or pull the chips off the part. Uh, so we always want to use other things like a rag or the compressed air to do that function. General shop safety rule number 12. Exercise caution when using the compressed air gun. I will now demonstrate the important point about air gun safety. If I grab one of the air guns located at a machine center, and I pull the trigger gently, a little bit of air will come out, and I can use that air for blowing off my part or blowing off the machine. If instead I grab the air gun and I pull the trigger rapidly, the noise can be loud enough to startle somebody, resulting in an injury. The final rule under general shop safety is to not joke around when in the laboratory. While we of course want you to have an enjoyable experience anytime you're in the lab, we want to caution you that something which could be perceived as funny elsewhere, if taken the wrong way, could startle another user and cause them to have an accident and incur a very serious injury. So anytime you're in the laboratory, please be mature and professional and mindful that many others are using the facility at the same time and we need to be careful for their well-being also. On page four, you will find a discussion of the cleanup procedures you are expected to follow each time you work in the lab. As noted at the top of the page, systematic cleanup is part of the safe operation of the laboratory. If you can't find a necessary tool in its normal place, or you have to work in someone else's mess, the result will be frustration. Since it's difficult to keep safety in mind when frustrated, it's important to always keep the shop clean and return everything to the correct location at the end of each work session. As noted in the middle of the page, do not drop your guard when cleaning up because this is the time when many of the accidents that occur in a machine shop environment take place. Clean up procedure number one. Shut off power to the machine and wait for all motion to cease. Next, unmount any cutters or tooling installed while using the machine. These tools are extremely sharp so they can cut metals, therefore they have no problem cutting our hands so when possible, we want to remove them prior to cleaning the machine. This rule applies to tools such as end mills, drill bits, and lathe cutting tools. The third step in the cleanup procedures is to put away all measuring tools, hand tools, material scraps, and drawings. If an item does not belong with the machine, it should not be left with it. If you are not sure of the correct location to which an item should be returned, simply give it to a lab instructor and let them put it away for you. Step number four is to clean chips and cutting oil from the machines and their chip pans. As noted in this section, rags and spray cleaner are provided for cleaning each machine station. If you use an air gun to facilitate cleaning, follow the safety rule covered previously and use the air gun early in the process so you don't have to repeat your work. Step five is to sweep the floor around the area of the machines you've used and while doing so you are cautioned to be careful not to strike your body on any parts of the machine as you clean around it. Step six asks that you return all machine tables to the centers of their travel. We will show you what this means when we train you on how to use the lathe and the mills, but essentially this simply means to leave each machine as you found it so it is ready for the next operator to use. Cleanup procedure number seven is very important, so please place an asterisk next to it. It asks that each facility user please report missing or broken tools to the lab staff. 
It goes on to explain that almost everything in the lab can be repaired or replaced as long as we know about it in time to do so without inconveniencing others. Tools will be broken as a normal part of learning to use the equipment. Unless the cause was willful disrespect, you will never be reprimanded for breaking any tooling, so please do not hesitate to inform our staff so we can replace or repair the tooling in a timely manner. The eighth and final point under cleanup procedures is to clean your personal or group work area. As stated, please put all tools away in the proper locations, wipe off your workbenches, and sweep the floor surrounding your work areas when they are dirty. The goal is to allow the last lab of the week to work in just as clean of an environment as the first lab of the week. And with that, we conclude the safety and cleanup orientation video. Thank you for taking the time to watch and understand the rules for safety and cleanup anytime you are working in our facility.